Have you ever stepped into populous reincarnated matchmaker? Excited to unleash world ending destruction? Launched your first game and gone, wait, what the heck is this? Has confusion gripped you as you notice that priests are gone, vehicles have been abolished, and the shaman's magical capabilities are half of what you know them to be? Well, so was Rallymoor, which is why he put together a team of passionate populist players to produce revival, with the goal to rebalance the entire arsenal of unlocks that populist beginning boasts. Revival takes the known issues of certain elements of populist beginning and attempts to rebalance them using the powerful scripting language of Lua. It is a carefully crafted masterpiece that constantly receives balance patches and updates based on the feedback of the community that plays it. And I'm going to walk you through all of them in this video. So sit back in your chair and listen to the hard work my team and I have developed specifically for your populist pleasure. The buffing spells of Invisibility, Magical Shield and Bloodlust are now unique buffs. What this means is you can only have one on a group of troops at a time. Use Invisibility to sneak into a base or Magical Shield to break down defences, but you cannot combine the two to slaughter unsuspecting shamans. If you cast a new spell, it overrides the buff of the previous spell. So there are still some niche uses that could be taken advantage of here, such as hiding a portion of your army and making them appear with shield when it is already too late. Furthermore, to make the spells a little easier to answer for their more expensive counters, Invisibility and Magical Shield will only affect 4 units, as opposed to the 6 you may remember in the story. This allows shamans to answer these spells more effectively without them being a go-to spell in every scenario. And lastly, their spell costs have been reduced from 500 and 600 mana to 750 mana for both, respectively. However, the changes to Magical Shield and Visibility do not stop there. As they've had some of their utility taken away from them to balance their individual power, a new ability has been added to them to make them a more strategic choice in team games, as you can now apply the buffs of Magical Shield and Visibility to your allies' forces. Ghost Army is a multiplayer-only spell that sees a lot of utility because of the resilience of the troops that it creates. As people found that incredibly powerful for a spell as cheap as Ghost Army, including the utility it provides, Ghost health has been reduced, meaning they can still distract towers for you to get spells in on them, but no longer completely decimate rows of towers with their resilience to fire warriors. The next spell we must talk about is Swamp, another spell that is a fan favourite but believed to be incredibly powerful. Swamp now deals a large amount of damage over time, does not have a limit to the number of units it can kill, but now also has a timer of 2 minutes. You can no longer remove it with shift and right click, and to make Swamp Deaths a little less annoying, there's a new type of death a shaman can experience. If she dies by the Swamp Spell, she will respawn in a very rapid 15 seconds, further augmenting Swamp's use as a defensive anti-troop spell and not a free shaman duel victory. Flatten is a spell that doesn't see an awful lot of use, and we haven't changed it very much, but have you ever played an annoying game where Earthquake is spammed so much you can't build a defence because all the land is damaged? Well, no more. In addition to the normal fixes to flatten that come with 1.5, Revival's flatten will heal damaged ground, making it a little bit more of an efficient answer to Earthquake spam on defences. We're moving on to Erode now, a spell that has always gotten flack from various populist players for being just truly awful. Now Erode is first of all cheaper, being reduced from 2100 mana to 1750 mana, but more importantly, it now creates a valley effect where it is cast. This makes the spell infinitely more effective in the middle of a base that has no nearby coastlines, and the Earthquake and Erode combination is now an even more impressive sight to behold in Revival. Segwaying into the change you're either going to love or hate, Earthquake has been nerfed. It's had its mana cost increased to 2400 mana, and the casting range has been reduced to match the range of the Firestorm and Volcano spells. It was important for the Revival team to not take away Earthquake's viability, so the main functions of the spell remain the same. However, we wanted to make Earthquake one of the many possible options as opposed to the only strategic option. Angel of Death is a spell that is either very powerful or very weak. We as a team felt we needed to make a couple of changes to Angel of the Death that affect the situations in which it is good. Slaying an enemy shaman with Angel of the Death no longer grants you a boon of her mana, meaning successive chomps won't charge up another Angel of the Death. But even if it did, you can only have one Angel of the Death at a time. Casting a new Angel of the Death will make the current one disappear. 
Lightning will explode balloons and boats now. No longer will you strike your searing enemies for them to thank you for the speed boost. Hit a direct lightning and watch as their boat explodes, sending all the occupants for a quick dip in the water. Tornado is less effective with only a chance to cause balloons to explode, but it's still a lot of fun watching balloons get sucked up. The last spell change is a new spell. In the slot where the guest spell would usually be, you can add two charges of hill for a cast of 1600. Don't sleep on hill. Placed correctly, it can destroy four huts on low ground, which is as much as a firestorm. It's actually a particularly potent offensive spell and creates some interesting situations for players to experiment with. Moving away from spells now, there are three changes to the Shaman that we must discuss. Those of you into modding may be aware that hit points are decided pseudo-randomly. The units get 75% of its maximum hit points every time, and the last 25% is randomly generated. Why should you care? Well, because this would cause a situation in which a Shaman could tank a little bit less Fire Warrior damage than normal, leading to her demise. We fixed this, so the amount of Fire Warrior shots are now consistent. With her abilities to cast unimaginable destruction, a shaman in a vehicle is an absolute menace to contain and is one of the big reasons vehicles are turned off. Well, the shaman can no longer cast while she's in a vehicle, meaning she has to leave to be able to wreck her havoc, giving her an opportunity to be killed in her assault. Lastly, like her troops, if a shaman inside a vehicle is tagged by swarm, she too will be forced to evacuate, just like when she's in a tower. Have no fear, a normal standing shaman is still immune to swarm. Since we're talking about vehicles, there is one balance to vehicles that again makes them more utility focused than an outright wind condition. Vehicles have hit points, meaning even if the followers inside are magically shielded, enough shots from fire warriors will trigger some impressive explosions, forcing the shielded followers to be grounded where they must then fight for their lives. There's only one balance change left to discuss now, and those are the changes to the notorious and overly useless Spy. Have you ever wondered why a Spy training hut costs the same as a massive Fire Warrior training hut? So did we. So we reduced the hut cost from 8 pieces of wood to 6. And lastly, you may have noticed in other videos, I've pointed out that Spies are the only follower who get weaker after being trained. We did not like that, so Spies are now equal to Braves in terms of their hit points, allowing them to at least have something of a chance when they're busted. The overall objectives of Revival are to create a fun version of Populous with multiple strategic decisions and an element of depth that you see when playing difficult single player worlds for the first time. We wanted to capture that magic of having unlimited power at your fingertips. There will always be additional patches as this is a living project with dedicated and passionate followers, but the importance above all else is the variety allowed. If you want to be a troop focused player who wants to buff his soldiers with invisibility and magical shield, you can do that. If you want to continue to let your shaman do the heavy lifting, you can. There are now multiple paths to victory and multiple styles of gameplay that are allowed to flourish. So come, give Revival a try and discover just what kind of shaman you are.